Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson at Excel International A Level, Biology Unit 5, Scientific Article for June 2024. Let's begin with the article. In this article, we have three mini articles. So I'll begin with the first one. And this is about horizontal gene transfer, looking at how it happens in nature, advantages as well as disadvantages. They say one species of white fly, an avid-like insect, has incorporated a portion of plant DNA into its genome that protects it from leaf toxins. It seems to be the first known example of so-called horizontal gene transfer between a plant and insect in which the transfer genetic material performs a useful function. While sequencing the genome of the silver leaf white fly, Ted Tallings at the University of Neuchatel in Switzerland and his colleagues discovered a gene known as BTPMAT1, which is found in plants but never previously seen in insects. This gene may have an important function in plants. The plants generate toxins to defend themselves from attacks by animals. The team suspects that the BTPMAT1 gene may help plants store these toxins in a harmless form so the plants don't poison themselves. Similarly, the gene may help the white fly avoid being poisoned when it eats the plant. Talling says the gene transfer event occurred between 35 million to 80 million years ago when the silver leaf white fly and other white fly species that lack the gene split from a common ancestor. The gene transfer event may have involved viruses that cause disease in plants and are transmitted by the white flies. Some DNA from a plant may have been taken up by a virus transmitted to the white flies and then subsequently assimilated into the insect's genome. Some viruses basically incorporate their own genome into the cells of their hosts, says Tallings. The research suggests that the extent to which horizontal gene transfer occurs in nature is probably underestimated, says Kathleen Byrat at the Australian National University in Canberra. What this shows is that where there is a really strong pressure for survival on the organism, it can actually borrow genetic information that helps it to do that from other organisms, says Byrat. The researchers demonstrated the function of BTPMAT1 in white flies by selectively interfering with a gene using small molecules of RNA. Disrupting the gene's function made the white fly susceptible to compounds known as phenolic glycosides that are present in tomato plants. After feeding on tomato plants that had been genetically modified to produce the RNA molecules, or white flies subsequently died. This demonstrates a mechanism that we could use in engineering crops to basically target plant pests and target the resistance of crops to plant pests, says Byrat, although she points out that horizontal gene transfer may then allow the pests to evolve resistance to our genetic engineering. The second article is about identification of genetically modified organisms. So for this one, it's not necessarily about horizontal gene transfer, it can be through genetic engineering that is intentional or done artificially. So they said glowfish are fluorescent transgenic zebrafish. These are illegal in many countries. Glowfish are zebrafish containing a DS red gene from a sea coral that makes the fish fluorescent under ultraviolet light. Zebrafish are normally silver and black. There are several versions of that DS red gene, each resulting in a different colored phenotype from fluorescent yellow to fluorescent red. As it is illegal to import these transgenic fish into many countries, technology is used to detect them. A PCR-based method has been developed to detect transgenic zebrafish harboring the gene DS red, coding for the red fluorescent protein originally isolated from the marine sponge Discosoma striata. Two types of PCR have been performed. PCR to detect amplifiable genomic zebrafish DNA was checked using primers specific for the zebrafish pravalmin gene. PCR with primers to specifically amplify the DS red gene. In both PCR systems, genomic DNA isolated from wild type zebrafish was used as a control template. In the second PCR system, the plasmid DS red 2 N1 was used as a positive control. Applying this method to several specimens of presumed glowfish from traders in the Netherlands and Germany revealed the presence of transgenic fish. In addition, a rapid method for screening zebrafish suspect to be genetically modified has been developed by measuring the fluorescence of water-soluble protein. So if we can look at article 2, again I annotated, we can see there is a lot of PCR gene isolation as well as identification of genetically engineered or modified organisms. 
This is focusing on the unpredictable outcomes from genetic engineering as well as horizontal gene transfer. Red and yellow and, at least 70 other colors, are genetically engineered fish have skin cells in all colors of the rainbow and then some. Its beauty is more than skin deep though. A huge variation in color could be used to track in video cells as they develop, move and regenerate. The skin bow, zebrafish, was created using a gene that codes for red, blue and green fluorescent proteins. Although only one color is produced at a time, Ken Post at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina, and his colleagues injected this gene into single-cell fish embryos. In one particular embryo, this gene became incorporated into part of the genome that patterns skin cells. As an adult, this fish looked reddish in color, but when the team shone a UV light on its skin, it lit up in technicolor. We didn't know these patterns would evolve just in the skin, says Post. When you make genetically engineered animals, you can't fully predict the outcome. Post thinks that each of the fish skin cells has about 100 copies of the gene. Whether each gene creates a red, green or blue protein is entirely random, he says. One cell may have 80 red, 10 green and 10 blue proteins, for example, says Post. Each cell could have one of about 5,000 possible color combinations, although the resolution of Post's microscope only lets him distinguish. 70 different colors among the cells. And lastly, this is talking about the benefits from genetic engineering in the future, what are the possible uses of genetic engineering? So they say the fish and its offsprings can be used to track how skin cells move to regenerate tissue and repair injuries. A task normally made difficult by the fact that individual skin cells look so similar to each other. In one experiment, Post's team took snapshots from one patch of skin twice a day for 20 days or well, the images were fed into a computer with software that can identify and track each skin cell based on its color. This allowed the team to work out that the entire population of the fish skin cells turn over every 20 days or so, and that each cell spends about 8 days on the surface of the skin before it wears off. The team also watched how the fish skin responds to injury. The group snipped part of a fin, an injury that zebra fish can usually repair, Skin cells in the surrounding area rest to the injury site and doubled in size to cover the area of the damage. Deeper down, a sheet of new skin cells was created which rose to the surface within half an hour. This approach lets us imagine cell dynamics in a live animal, says Post. He hopes that the skin ball fish can be used to reveal more about how tissue regeneration occurs, a process that is still mysterious, he says. Christine Poller, who studies wound healing at the University of Leicester, UK, agrees. I can imagine that this group will be able to explore skin biology on a new level, she says. I look forward to seeing more research on skin ball. So here is my overview about the articles, and again we have three articles linked into one. They are focusing on horizontal gene transfer, genetic engineering, how they occur, proof that they occurred, advantages, disadvantages, as well as the potential uses. So the possible topics to focus on from article one, which focuses on horizontal gene transfer, the definition of horizontal gene transfer, this is movement of genetic information between species, especially it occurs in nature. The first part, we can look at incorporation of genes into organisms in creating transgenic organisms. This occurs in two ways. The first could be natural, for example, horizontal gene transfer, here it occurs naturally. So here they could ask about plasmids in nature and how they can be exchanged between bacteria, as well as viruses in nature, talking about viruses acting as vectors in order to move genetic information from one organism to another. Here are questions about the structure of viruses, how they function, reverse transcription, integration, the viral life cycle, and so on. Then how it occurs artificially, for example, by genetic engineering, here, they'll ask questions about making recombinant DNA, isolation of DNA using restriction enzymes as well as DNA ligase. They can ask questions about using vectors to insert the DNA into organisms. In talking about vectors, remember there are two types. They are viral vectors and non-viral vectors. The viral vectors involve using a harmless virus, while the non-viral vectors include using gene GANs, liposomes, microinjections, plasmids, and so on. And then the next part, they can ask about selection of transformed organisms. How can we know that the genes have been successfully inserted into the organism that was supposed to receive them? So in your textbook, they talk about replica plating, possibly using antibiotic resistance, as well as a specific nutrient 
that could enable or prevent the growth of certain organisms so, so you can focus on methods of confirming if organisms have been transformed then the next part is about detection of expressed genes in organisms of course if genes are expressed in a specific cell messenger rna is going to be produced so in micro array we talk about how that messenger rna is converted into cdna using reverse transcription and then the cdna can be used in micro array followed by data analysis using bioinformatics so you need to focus on that so from paragraph 4 i see speciation evolution natural selection and then paragraph 5 of article 1 they can talk about viruses that cause disease the details about viruses like the viral life cycle viral infections and possibly immune response but this i think it's a long shot but i just included it there just make sure you know everything in paragraph 6 again viral life cycle survival of the fittest natural selection selection pressure and ultimately leading into evolution in paragraph 7 we see knockout organisms gene silencing control of gene expression so all these things could be asked in paragraph 8 we see selection pressure evolution pesticide resistance and so on so i think questions about evolution and natural selection are coming up in every paragraph so those are things you should look out for and then advantages and disadvantages of genetic engineering i'm going to talk about these on the next page and then from article 2 like you saw my annotation this is talking about identification of genetically modified organisms so again here we expect gene expression the resporting synthesis because there are molecules that were produced, the role of transcription factors. You do not know if the RNA molecules that were produced are acting as transcription factors or if those RNA molecules are used to make proteins and the proteins are going to control how genes are expressed or how the cell functions. Then again, genetic engineering, talking about isolation of genes using restriction enzymes, ligates, and so on. And this paragraph focuses a lot on polymerase chain reaction or PCR. So you have to know the significance of PCR. Remember, this is for amplification of DNA, how PCR is carried out. And then I just attached gel electrophoresis because sometimes from PCR, they can go to that. And there was something mentioned about soluble proteins. So they could ask about the structural proteins that make them soluble. Remember, soluble proteins have R groups that are hydrophilic on the outside. So they can make them to be soluble while the hydrophobic R groups are gonna be on the inside. When the protein falls into the 3d structure from article 3 they are focusing on outcomes from genetic engineering so here we expect maybe questions on cell differentiation and changing how they function we can also talk about microarray and bioinformatics in paragraph 19 they talked about cells doubling so a question about mitosis and dna replication could be asked and again this is a long shot they could ask questions about the unpredicted outcomes from genetic engineering an example they used was more variations than predicted. Of course, this could be a question where you have to think in different scenarios based on the outcomes being good or bad. In paragraph 17, they talked about microscopy. And what they talked about was the microscope was only able to distinguish 70 different colors, so many. They could ask about the different microscopes, TEM, SEM, and so on, and again, maybe or not. And then paragraph 15, 17, cell differentiation, post-transcription modification, and so on. Things that I could add are advantages of genetic engineering as well as the disadvantages. So you have to know the advantages are it's useful in research. This is shown in article 3, line 18. Then it helps organisms to gain resistance to pathogens. It helps plants to be resistant to pests. And again, for the farmers, the plants or crops they produce are going to have better taste, longer shelf life, and so on. These are many advantages in your textbook, so you can refer to that. And then the disadvantages of genetic engineering and horizontal gene transfer include unpredictable outcomes due to horizontal gene transfer. Of course, this includes some organisms gaining like antibiotic resistance in bacteria. It could be pesticide resistance. Imagine if crops have a pesticide resistant gene and then this gene is passed on to the pests. It means the pesticide will not be working on the pests anymore. And that shows pesticide resistance and so many more. I think these articles are mainly focusing on topic 8C from your textbook. So please focus a lot on genetics, protein synthesis, and everything to do with genetic modification, amplification of DNA, and so on, in order to be able to answer all the questions that could potentially come. So this brings us to the end of the predicted topics that could be asked from this scientific article. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.